Welcome to the Modular Clubhouse. I'm Jesper, and this is the Mandala by Likan. So I think it's safe to say that anyone who's ever seen the Mandala before uh, won't easily forget it. It is a rather big module, uh, but I think it's one of the most beautiful, if not the most beautiful module out there. It's extremely aesthetically pleasing, and therefore I look at this um, on the one hand as a module, but also as a piece of art. And because this is quite a big step for me, um, coming from a lot of the smaller utilitarian modules that I've well, come to uh, feature on this, these videos as well. Uh, this is of course a totally different uh, thing there. So I do have to thank Likaon for sponsoring this episode. And um, yeah, I would uh, just like to dive right in and show you how you can use this and how you, um, how you're probably going to fall in love with this module as well. So for now, I would say, hope you guys are sitting down because uh, here we go. Here we have the Mandala by Likon. It's it's a it's a big and hefty module, and I want to tell you in in this video why I feel that this is worth its HP. I've already well, I've I've sent some pictures on on Instagram where I said and I actually claim to the world that this is the most beautiful module out there. Of course, there's no accounting for taste, uh, but I truly love the the raw industrial metal metal look to it, and then combined with what I think is a great font, and I'm still I still need to ask Nico which font that is, and then combine that with the or the actual UI you've got there, uh, which is of course on the one hand very esoteric with a mandala, and you then have direct feedback of where you are in your sequence, and wow, it 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 just jives with me, and that's of course one thing, and that's again a personal thing as well. So what I want to do is I just want to quickly run through the well the actual rest of the user interface, how you work with this how you go to settings, how you change settings, all of that. And then we're just going to create a patch as well. And I hope that that's going to be enough to uh, to show everyone how great of a module this is. Um, so first things first, as mentioned, this is an eight channel or an eight track uh, step sequencer. Uh, you can select the, the, the active track that you can then uh, design by the or the channel or track selectors down here. Uh, you can also mute each of these tracks individually by using these switches. And the one thing you won't be seeing is individual track CV outputs. The only way in which the mandala is well exposing that sequence to the outside world and to your other modules, to your computer, maybe your other synths, is through MIDI. So you do have a MIDI out and a MIDI in right there. So you can then indeed take the MIDI out and patch that to any, anything else you want to connect this to. Um, and you can also use um, MIDI over USB by connecting a, uh, well, just a regular USB cable. In this case, you'll need to have a micro USB cable and connect it to the micro SD port on the back end of the mandala. And that's what I'm using. So I've got the USB cable here running uh, MIDI over USB to the Hermit. And we can then take Hermit uh, and Hermit will then translate these eight tracks to eight CV tracks there too. So I've talked about MIDI. I've talked about these two ports there as well. We do have a clock out more about well tempos later on. And we then have four CV inputs and all four of these can be used to set the, well, the, uh, the Euclidean parameter uh, for track one, two, three, and four. And you can also configure it so that uh, CV in one uh, will be your clock in and CV two will be your reset. And that's of course something that you can do in the, well, in the actual uh, parameter settings, more on that later. Um, we talked about the eight tracks. We then have here four, I like to call them quick saves because it's just a matter of if you've set up a, a nice uh, rhythm, a nice uh, 
uh, jam you would say just press the shift button and the quick save slots you do want to save them to um, but that is of course very well fluid so if you power off your your uh, your module you're going to lose these quick saves but we do have a more permanent storage mechanism if you go to the preset there and here you've got 16 slots that you can use to store your tracks on so uh, that's one thing uh, you already saw me working with the with the button here you can use this to in the euclidean mode that we're in right now uh, to set the number of euclidean steps within your uh, uh, within your sequence and you can also just press down on this here you go and if you're in the euclidean state you can just use this to add additional steps or remove steps by hand so you have full flexibility on how you want to design your pattern um, but let's go back to euclidean and just uh go like that and we can just change it again then we've got the rotation so let's add a few steps here so now i've got a nice four step sequence i press rotate and i can actually just rotate this however i want so let's go back there so right now i've got a 16 step sequence uh, but i can of course change the lengths for each eight of these tracks so i can have a true polyrhythmic um, sequence and so you might have uh, the the first track being 16 steps the the second one uh, <laughs> uh, 17 or 37 all the way up to 64 so right now it's set to 16 I go one to the right and we now have 17 because we've we've got the first 16 covered and we're in the second 16th and we have we have one and then we've got 32 33 and we can continue on all the way up to 64 so that's the maximum length of a sequence of a track i'm just gonna set this back to 16 because i'm not <laughs> i'm not a polyrhythmic for virtuoso yet and then the other option that we have is shuffle so if we do have something set up maybe a simple one you can then press shuffle and what that will do is it will randomly generate a 256 um, uh, length random sequence that you can just turn the knob and navigate through so you can just see however we want to use that there you see it and of course this has been generated by using a 30 percent chance of a of a step being being on and a 70% of it being off and you can just keep on navigating through this or generate even more there you go but let's go back to Euclidean and just uh, do it like that um, we also have the tempo so currently this is I think it's now set to 120 BPM and it's got a very elegant way of setting the tempo so you just press tempo and you then set the three digits of the BPM that you want so if you want the first digit to be zero you set it to zero if you want it to start with a with with a one or at least a hundred then you set it to that to that one and you can go all the way up so that's quite nice of course so I'm just going to select uh, one and then we might say oh I've, I've got it set to uh, to one and two so 120 and I can go to 130 and then the third um, is gonna be one two three four five 135 and you can now see how that's reflected in the tempo that we're using so let's go back I'm just gonna change it back to uh, 120 there you go because I think that's a nice rhythm um, so we talked about that you've got your 16 presets you can store the other thing you also do is you can set your parameters and this is where I'm going to need my cheat sheet so these are the well <laughs> the, the the hidden combat codes that you can use so the first one here at the top is actually setting well do we want this to act as the MIDI master or the MIDI slave so if you have that on it's going to be the mini MIDI master which is how actually we want it 
then the second one is indeed and well this is something that i do need to explain a bit more as i said the actual sequence it will be exposed over midi and you have two different ways of doing that you have the well the way as i've set it right now so each one of these tracks of the sequence will then be um, exposed to their own corresponding midi channel so uh, track one goes to midi channel one all the way up to channel number eight it goes to midi channel eight you can also disable this and what you will then have is that everything will be going over midi channel one and each of the tracks will correspond to their own notes uh, so you can then use it that way but i as i'm using hermit and i'm going to show you how i've set up hermit later on i want that to be on then the third parameter is well how do you want what do you want to happen if you switch between these tracks um, if you've got that on it's gonna always gonna change back to the euclidean mode otherwise it's just going to stay in the mode in which it was before and then the next one is if you want to disable the mute switches i can't think of why you want to do that but maybe there are people that uh, want to disable them but I th still think that the mute switches are a great performance uh, thing as well. And then the, um, the last two, so these two, are indeed the ones that are going to set the behavior for CVN1 and C CVN2. So if you've got these on as they are right now, then CV1 will be your clock in. And if you've got the second one on, that one, then this behaves as a reset input. So I'm just going to leave them as they are right now. So that is essentially the whole user interface and the user experience for working with the Mandala. Um, I did promise you to show you how I set the Hermit to take all of these eight MIDI channels and then translate those to the gate outputs uh, on, the, on the Hermit there as well. So if you go to track and then press settings, and you can then go to clock, uh, sorry, MIDI in, and then you can set all of the tracks to their corresponding MIDI channels. Pretty straightforward, but still, you need to uh, you need to you've, you've, you need to do that just once. So we've set this up. Um, how about we just start patching something really nice? At least I'm going to try to make something really nice. So I've got eight different percussion-like. Uh, modules here with me today so i've got the foundation by noise reap and i've got the kick by mrg and the nice thing about the kick is it's got two trigger inputs so this can already cover two of the tracks that we've got there i've got the proc which i've configured as a snare drum i've got plats of course i've got the two opfm and i've got the metalotron by uh, skull and circuits i've got the tip to audio one the sample player and that is, I think, enough to cover <laughs> eight tracks of, um, well, of step sequency goodness, I hope. So let's begin. So I'm just, um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to connect the foundation by Noise Reap. So right now that's connected. And I'm just going to connect that straight from here into the Vivisect. I'm just going to take the volume down a bit because otherwise we might get blown away a bit. There you go, all the way up there. And the only thing we can now do is indeed add some steps. So I'm in Euclidean mode, I'm in track one. Hey. And then, of course, we can do all kinds of things with this. And we can all, as I said, we can also rotate it. We can change the length. So instead of just using 16, I might want to say we do uh, 18 or even 20. Let's do 20. And we can also say that we want to shuffle this. But I think that this is uh, already a nice start. So then we take track number two. 
I'm going to connect track number two to the MRG kick and I am then going to connect that to the Vivisect 2. So I'm just going to turn the volume on the foundation down a bit and we're going to on track number two. one and then I'm going to use track number three to uh, do the second trigger on the on the kick so track number three oh that's not too bad actually and then we're going to grab track number four. See if we can connect that to the proc. There we go. And connect that to the vivisect like this. Let's turn these down for now. Turn that one up. Track number four. we're getting somewhere then we're going to grab the fifth track get that into plats but before we do that what I also want to do is I want to molt the output there so I do want to grab one of these and patch that into the triggering for plats uh, might want to take a bit longer cable for that there you go and we grab the outputs and patch that into the dope for mixer I've got down here. And then patch the dope for back into the vivisect. There we go. Track number five. And I'm going to then also grab the second one of this and trigger this sample and hold here. There we go. And then patch that back into plats too, so we can have something with a bit of variety there. And if we then increase that. <laughs> it's just one of those crazy things that you can do uh, then channel 6 is going to be the uh, 2 OPFM so I'm just going to grab this here in the trigger and then I'm going to grab the outputs and patch that into the dope for mixer as well there you go Grab some hi hats from Matlotron. There you go. And patch that from there to the other one. 
how much do we want to have there? Something like that. Maybe a bit more volume there. And then last but certainly not least, we're going to connect the Tip Top Audio 1 to the 8th track. something like that. So if we then start to play around with a bit of the volumes, how we actually uh, create a mix there. So I might want to use a different sample on one. do want to change this one back to uh, channel number one we set that to 20 I do want to change that back to 16 <laughs> now let's add a bit of reverb to this so I I Totally respect if people tell me, well, yes, but this just sounds like a doctor, a cacophony of, uh, of noise. Um, and of course, that might be true for someone who's just tuning in right now and just listening to this. Uh, but if you saw how I built this up, then you might get a, a bit of an understanding what I've tried to do here. Um, would it make sense to have just eight percussion units doing this? I don't know, but I, I certainly love playing around with it like this, and I've spent so many hours just tinkering with with these uh, with these rhythms and with these um, with these lengths as well. So I did try some uh, polyrhythmic uh, things too, and it it offers so much inflexibility that I truly think that this is indeed worth its uh, its width in HP. So let's uh, let's just listen to this for a bit. I'm just going to play with it for you. I'm just I'm just enjoying this way too much. So I would say let's uh, go back to the studio and uh, wrap this up. Thanks so much. Cheers. <laughs> so I hope everyone enjoyed this video on the mandala by Likaon. Um, it's been a blast to record this video, and as said, I'm truly well uh, impressed with what you can achieve with this module as well and the ease of use. Um, so I'm again I'm quite biased in that. So I hope to. Uh, I got a bit of objectivity across to you as well. Um, that being said, uh, I do have to thank Lekan for sponsoring this episode, of course. Again, many thanks to Nico uh, for providing uh, this module. On the other hand, I do have to thank, again, almost everyone that's uh, watching these videos. The channel has grown exponentially over the course of the last couple of weeks and months. So again, everyone who watches this, thanks so much. Thanks to everyone uh, that has taken the time to, uh, to like and subscribe or even comment. And many thanks to everyone who uh, used any of the affiliate links or used um, one of the links to become a patron or just buy me a coffee. Uh, 
many thanks and um, I wouldn't have uh, come this far without you, your support as well. So for now I would say hope everyone is still staying safe, staying healthy, please keep doing so and for now I would just say uh, take care, cheers.